All right, welcome to the Township Committee meeting, January 11th, uh, 2021, via Zoom remote access, uh, 7 p.m. Roll call, please. Hey, Mr. Brown is absent at roll call, hopefully soon to be in. He's muted. Oh, I'm here. Brown is here. Hey, hi, John. Hello there. So I'll scratch out the absence. Okay, no, Ms. Patrick. Yeah. Ms. Holland. Here. Mr. Alex. Here. And Mr. Templeton. Here, finally, thank you. Also present, Mr. Schwab, Township Administrator, uh, Mr. Fox, our Township Engineer, Mr. Heinold, the Township Solicitor, Mrs. War Municipal Clerk. Uh, I saw they saw her there. There she is. Hi there, Mrs. Martin, Deputy Municipal Clerk. Mr. Fenimore is en route uh, telephonically. Uh, Chief. He uh, is available. I, I got him on. Very good. Thank you. We have Aaron Provenzano as our uh, technical Zoom Zoom transporter. And I'd like to also mention that we have uh, um, Mr. Keeley, the school board uh, liaison, is also present tonight. So um, if ever there is a week to do this, um, I think we'll have a flag salute. Ah. Oh, wow. Congratulations to the flag, flag the United States, States of America, America. America. and to the Republic of the Republic of the States. One, One nation, nation under God, indivisible, with the liberty of this justice just for all. Uh, I'd like to ask for a moment of silence. Uh, uh, Joe Barrett, uh, a longtime member of the uh, library board, passed away on Saturday. Oh. Um, he was a staunch supporter of the Delanco Public Library and the value that it brings to the community. Also, I'd like to uh, recognize uh, uh, Capitol Police Officer Brian Sicknick, who is a former member of the New, New Jersey National Guard, and Capitol Police Officer Howard Believing Good. A moment of silence, please. Thank you. Uh, Sunshine statement, please, Mrs. Lord. Mm -hmm. Please be advised that proper notice of this meeting has been given in compliance with the Open Public Meetings Act in the following manner. Written notice has been mailed to the Rowland County Times and Courier Post and published in the January 5th, 2021 editions. Written notice has been posted on the official bulletin board of the town of Delanco at least 48 hours prior to the meeting. Uh, we have a room, uh, remote meeting statement um, via Zoom. Um, with various uh, meeting ID and passcode dial-in locations. Mm -hmm. And um, any public comments will be accepted via letter or electronic mail. All advanced comments must be received no later than six hours prior to the comm commencement of the published public meeting start time. All advanced public comments must be submitted to the municipal clerk's email or to the municipal clerk's attention at 770 Coopertown Road. And the public comments submitted before the remote public meeting deadline will be read aloud during the remote public meeting. Members of the public who wish to make comments or have questions during the meeting, um, during the public comment session, may either make their comments via the audio option or by typing in their comment or question via the Zoom platform, platform chat option. Um, and then the um, Members of the public who are deemed to be disruptive as defined by NJAC 539-1 may be muted after an initial warning for the duration of the public comment session or the remainder of the remote meeting session. And the agenda is available for this remote meeting on the Delanco Township website, as so noted. Okay. And for the record, um, I did not receive any um, advance comments or questions before, before the start of the meeting. Okay. Thank you. Uh, just to give a little outline of the tonight on the agenda, we've got uh, being the second, um, well, the first meeting of the first regular meeting of January. Uh, we've kind of got uh, uh, all the reports from our professionals tonight. We also have our committee reports. So there's going to be a lot of commentary and so forth. 
And then we've, uh, we will have a, we will go into executive session following meeting. And as required, we will come back into public session following the closed uh, executive session. So uh, at this point, I'd like to open the meeting to the public for comments and questions session one. If you have a question or comment, please uh, unmute, uh, state your name, address, and uh, what's on your mind, please. Oh, can everyone hear me? Yes, good evening. Hey, this is Paul Blazewick at 327 Vine Street. Hello. Uh, a couple months ago, we were discussing the fence ordinances, and I haven't been able to attend the meetings in the last two months because of work or trips. Um, just look and see what the update is. I couldn't find any of the minutes from the last two months meetings online, so I'm just looking for an update. Well, right now, let's see, we've uh, designated two of our committee members to work with the construction code uh, uh, and, and building a construction officer to go over a couple different um, templates of uh, different buildings, uh, uh, footprints of residential homes and how uh, various fences, uh, siting would be whether the property is in the middle of the block or corner property and so forth, and trying to get some kind of general um, template or guideline that that we could define a set of uh, parameters that would apply to a middle of the block property and a corner property and so forth. Um, uh, the, the issue that's come up with your property and many properties throughout the town um, is it's not a one size fits all by any means. And it's become extremely difficult to try to define um, one size fits all, which doesn't seem to work. And we're very, we're really hamstrung by the code and uh, the requirements that if it's, if it's in the code as far as going through the planning board and seeking a variant. So there's, there's some pretty strong guardrails that, that make this uh, as, as simple as, as it sounds from the first look. It's, it's a very complicated uh, issue to try to untangle it and not create additional problems. So um, unfortunately, it has taken, uh, oh gosh, we're into the seventh month or so since you wrote your, your email to us, uh, at least. So it's, uh, but uh, we, it has been a topic of discussion just about every month, uh, both in the public meetings and in the, in the offices of the municipal building. So uh, does anyone, Kate, uh, Chris, Mr. Schwab, or have anything to add to that or clarify what I may have misspoken about? Um, well, I, I would like to say that um, I feel that the outcome of this subcommittee would be to amend the ordinances in some way to be able to provide for some properties uh, so that they can repair fences. Chris and I are going to, I, I told, I, I mentioned to her before the meeting, um, there are some properties in town that have these six foot fences that um, obviously they are illegal and some of them are um, a little bit sightly and others like what you would like to do um, would actually improve your property. So it's not fair to everyone to have to um, go by that particular ordinance or to get a variance because of the cost. So one way or another, we hope to either amend the ordinances or um, work with the Joint Land Use Board for maybe having an easier access or less of an expense for variance. Um, because in some cases you would need a variance. Uh, and in your case, that's what you would need at this point. And uh, I know the fees can get costly and maybe there's something that we can do to that end um, if we can't come up with a, another resolution. But um, Chris, I, I don't know if you wanna add anything, but feel free to. No, that, that's where I'm at with it too. I, I expect that the outcome would be an amendment to the ordinance as, as it exists. I had um, emailed with Janice about pulling old records because the ordinance used to be a lot less cumbersome, um, a lot less restrictive. Um, 
so I am curious about the history of why we went to a three foot, four foot, six foot um, delineation. And so whether there was something going on in town or a, whatever the, uh, the catalyst extra restriction was, but I, I'd like to see the six foot to the, to the front property, uh, front building line. Um, but I, I do want an eye out for when we're walking around for those one-off situations that just doesn't work for. Okay, can I, uh, anybody else have anything? I just want to add two quick points. Um, has anybody looked at maybe amending the language to just say either the rear corner of the property line or the end of a driveway based on how the house was built? That's my issue. It's, it's just, that's the end of my driveway. It's the end of your and, driveway, yes. And I can't build a hot fence on the rear corner because I have a deck at the rear corner. It, it's, I, I know, again, it's a one-off, but maybe the language is the end of the rear corner or end of the driveway. And if you guys are looking at fences, please, you are welcome to come to my home and look at this fence. I have sections that are about to fall. One section's already fallen, I've repaired, and I have another one I've propped up. It's rotting. I need this fixed. I have a four-year-old who likes to run very fast into things like a fence that's rotting that I'm trying to stop him from doing. I need this fixed. That's all I have. Thank you. Appreciate uh, your, your calling in. And uh, actually many of, most of us have been by uh, uh, and looked at the, the situation there from the sidewalk and so forth and appreciate the invitation to, to look farther, but uh, uh, understand Dan, we are, we're, we're moving as fast as we can and it has not, uh, it's, it's been prominent on our, uh, on our minds uh, on the agendas for the last several meetings. So appreciate your patience. We'll, uh, we're working on it. Yes, sir. All right. Thank you very much. Have a good night, everyone. Thank you. Any other comments for the public comment session, session one? Hearing and seeing none. Nothing Nothing in the chat, Mayor. All right, very good, thank you. Uh, comment questions section of the meeting is now closed to the public. Comments and reports, uh, we'll start off. Uh, Mr. Schwab, Township Administrator. Thank you. I have another thing uh, most prominent is uh, the next time we'll be together will be on the 25th, Monday the 25th, 3.30 for a budget session, which we'll be apparently doing by Zoom. So that uh, whatever paperwork I have, I will get to you uh, in advance, as much in advance as possible. So you'll have to make sure you come in and pick up your copies because you'll need to have that with you. I won't be able to hand it out then and maybe Aaron will show me how I can show some of it on the screen, but we'll work on that. The intent is that uh, John, I have to talk to him about it, but as we did last year, invite John for Public Works, uh, Jesse and Adam for the Police Department and Janice will talk about their department's budgets. Uh, then I'll talk about, you know, the total of all the uh, requests that are in there and we'll go through what the impact and see what other kind of questions you have while we uh, wait for the uh, financial statement to be done by the auditor. And then we'll know what the revenue side is and he can clean up some of the other uh, issues. And we'll see what, uh, when we meet in February, we'll have an idea what kind of tax rates we're talking about. So that's the plan. So in your minds, make sure that you're gonna be able to at least the Friday before stop in at least over the weekend so that you have all the paperwork with you for the meeting. Um, what, time, what, what time on Monday? 3.30 on Monday the 25th. 3.30. That's what you guys agree to. Everyone still good on that? All right, we're good and we'll be doing the same kind of Zoom. Uh, we re we received and open bids for the Field of Dreams turf maintenance contract. Uh, the low bid for the base bid was the current vendor TLC at uh, 46,945. The next was McHugh's at 50,200 and then on site at 68,000. Plus, there's some alternate that we put in there for, for cost, costing out basis, but not that we would award them at this point in time. Uh, Scott is working on cleaning up some questions. We will then get his recommendation letter uh, with my explanation email to the Recreation Board Commission. They will then, their meeting this week, 
review that and give a recommendation back and a decision can be made at your February 1st meeting. Uh, so that, and this is a one-year contract, but we have the our option to add the next two years so that if there's a concern with the vendor, then we go out to bids again. We don't have to continue with that vendor. Uh, currently, the, the uh, current vendor uh, has had some issues, but has corrected those issues. We don't have any uh, legal reason to not make that award at this point in time, unless somebody comes up with something that I'm not aware of. Um, we also then, speaking of Field of Dreams, uh, we're working on this, the lawn, event lawn area. And so uh, Scott is, I called a meeting for Scott to go over that with uh, the recreation people and our in, internal people with John and, and so on. We're doing that, I think on the 28th to 3.30 out of the field. So uh, Kate and Christine for the, uh, for rec. And then uh, I think uh, the chairman will be there and John uh, will be there also. And uh, we'll, with Scott, we'll go over uh, what's needed so that Scott can then put together the uh, specs and we'll get out to bids as soon as possible with that. We also got notice from uh, Matt Johnson of the county that they're ready with a pre-construction meeting for the uh, uh, Amakota Pennington Trail project that will be coming through our community February 2nd, 3 o'clock is what he's trying to set up. And hopefully it's going to be a Zoom thing, uh, and Jesse and I can be on there. And if they're, I'm not sure how they. It's mostly as the routine things for the contractor, but it's good to be able to know when the contractor is planning to come in, what the impacts are, communication, and so on. So we'll find out if anyone else is interested in listening in on that once they finalize the the date and time. It's tentatively February second at three o'clock on Zoom, but they could get some objections from some people. And so they may change that. I uh, get a hold of Matt to put on the county website what that, uh, some kind of graphic or map of what that routing is. So uh, yeah, someone can talk to them about time ago. And uh, right. I had emailed uh, Matt Johnson and Mary, Mary Pat Robbie uh, asking for that. And as far as I can find, it's not posted. So if you have any communication from, with him, uh, jog his memory maybe and put something up so yeah. as that starts moving people know what's happening yeah they they did send us some stuff after your request which was almost impossible you know it's, to look on a screen it was uh taking a photo of the blueprints yeah. which don't make a lot of sense yeah. to the general public so uh that may need to be something that needs to be done once they have a timetable all right um so we have that going uh carrie and his report will talk about the road pro Program, but I just want to remind you there's three items on your agenda, three maybe four, dealing with moving forward on the road program. We got the capital ordinance to appropriate the funds. Uh, we have a capital, temporary capital budget uh, to allow us to spend the funds. And then uh, you've got the proposals from ERI to do the engineering work for that. So those things are, are in your uh, consent agenda. You'll also mention we have a change order for uh, the drainage project. If you remember, John had reported a few minute meetings ago about uh, an inlet that collapsed. Uh, it was within the area where the project's gonna be done. And uh, so they we added the repair of that uh, to the contract. So Harry can explain that further. You also have in there an office equipment disposal resolution Janice put in that was for the old copier that was traded in. So whenever we, we owned it, so we have to legally uh, have a record that we're disposing of it. So those are the things I have. And so I'm working on the budget is the most important thing. I also have, of course, the assessor's report. And then you got a couple of things up from the GIF on uh, elected official seminars and something from the league on uh, new seminars for elected officials to make sure if anyone's got any questions, uh, they can look at that. But that's what I have, thank you. Any, anything yeah. else I can do for you? Okay. All right. Very good. Uh, let's see. Mrs. Lord, do you have anything from administration? You mute it. Sorry about that. Uh, actually, my items fall under the uh, reports for the uh, COVID update, uh, a uh, flexible spending update, and uh, the um, policy change of policy right. update. So nothing at this time. 
All right, very good. Uh, let's see, Chief DeSanto. Okay, you would think after 10 months, I'd be better at this. But um, the, uh, I just got a few things. I know you guys have a lot to discuss, so I'll just go through them real quick. Uh, COVID vaccinations have come for uh, law enforcement. We've been uh, just pushed into or blended in the 1A phase. Um, originally law enforcement is the 1B phase. So they're still uh, working on the 1A and so they included law enforcement. So uh, our, our police officers have been scheduled this week uh, for the first round of vaccinations. Uh, if they decided not to, um, it's not just a one final decision. They can always go back and later get them. Uh, we're running about the same as the average for the population in terms of interest. It's approximately about 50%. Um, you know, I just think some time goes by and some more information comes out about the vaccine. It might be make people a little more comfortable to receive it. So they're um, getting this first round out then they're gonna open a mega site and allow law enforcement to go to that mega site because it's gonna be 20, uh, excuse me, seven days a week, not 24 seven, 12 hours a day, seven days a week, the mega sites. Um, so that's the update for the vaccine. Um, like I said, it's approximately half the department's gonna be vaccinated this week alone. Um, the um, update with the uh, holding, the holding area improvement project, uh, the, the uh, blueprints are just about completely done and gonna be submitted to uh, DOC final approval. Um, the bid package is almost completed uh, for, and uh, before to Doug for his review, <clears throat> which uh, things got pushed back a little bit with the COVID. And, and maybe it's a good thing because do we really want contractors in and out of the police department while we're at a spike? Mm -hmm. So that, that is moving along. Uh, unfortunately, the new patrol vehicle, which was budgeted for 2020, uh, was ordered in June. Um, when Ford switched over to their um, ventilator production, they uh, got back to the production of vehicles. So apparently the, um, all the vehicles, they weren't producing vehicles and delivering, they were holding them and delivered them all, all at once. So I've been informed that our new patrol vehicle for 2020 won't be delivered until May of 21. So just to make you aware of that. So it might affect the maintenance costs, but we'll, we'll do the best we can. Um, the gate for Hawk Island, uh, Mr. Fenimore uh, bailed me out again. He noticed the, the, the post for the gate seemed a little bit too narrow uh, for everything could possibly go back there. So he reached out to Harry, who reached out to me. And so the contractor was contacted and there's gonna be a, a change on the width of the gate. Contractor said, uh, we called him in time where it's not gonna be a major expense. Um, it, you know, it's not, it's not going to be anything he said to worry about, maybe a couple hundred dollars here and there, but, um, but we'll have access for all types of vehicles now. Uh, he, it's good, Harry said it's going to be over, uh, over 12 feet. And um, so that's the uh, gate for Vine Street. As soon as the gates are made, I'm sure he's going to proceed with that and installing them. And the school is uh, scheduled to go back to their hybrid on January 19th. Uh, we're still a little short in crossing guards, so this is my uh, this is my advertisement for crossing guards. But we will cover the critical uh, corners and critical posts uh, to get the children to and from school on their uh, you know their in person learning days of Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. Uh, that's all I have. Thank you, Chief. Good catch by uh, you two on the on the gate there. That would have been uh, expensive. All right, let's see, uh, professionals, let's see. Uh, Mr. Fox. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, as usual, you have my report and I'll just touch on the, on the highlights. Um, the, uh, the, the Dolan um, work next door, they are planning to start on Thursday with their actual starting to install uh, the drainage system. Um, and I wanted to check, okay, I, I just received their, an email from them tonight saying they're going to be there Thursday. Um, Kitty, did they um, post their bond and escrow account yet? Do you know? Uh, 
Can you, can you hear me? Yeah, I had to unmute, sorry. Um, they do not have final plans in, no, no final signed sealed plans are in yet. They are still waiting for approval from the county. Um, so they're, they don't have storage authority approval. Right. But did they put, did they post a bond in escrow? No. No. Okay. No. They told me they did. did. Okay. Um, they did not post it with me. I don't know whether okay. they think they posted. I mean, they had to pay a fee to the storage authority, but that was for their application fee. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So as of today, I do not have anything from them. Okay, then then they may not be starting Thursday. Um, so, I mean, is this is is the work they're planning to do okay without permit? Um, yeah, because they really there is no real permit. It's just they're at their own risk. If if the plants come back different than what they're installing, they don't have to take it out and, and redo it. Um, okay. And 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 we do have to deal with the fair share issue before uh, sewer gives them a permit. So now that we know, I, I didn't think they're moving this quickly. So I have to pull that file out and start talking about it. Yeah, okay. I did. I did. I thought they were just moving earth around because um, they there were still a few issues with the plans that had to be resolved with Hugh and Michelle. Right. And the county. OK, I'll, I'll follow up with, with them and see where we stand on that. Yeah, I, um, Harry, um, on that fair share. Um, they, I, I believe Bill Kirshner's calculation is what will be used. So uh, Bill has those calculations for their portion of the, the fair share for the Coopertown road sewer line. Right. Yeah, I, 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 I did talk to, to actually Ben Weller um, and, and they did submit their plans and they're being reviewed right now. So um, yeah, well, I'm sure they contact uh, you and Richard about the fair share. Um, the road programs, uh, the 2020 uh, road programs, uh, that's the um, Lilac Lane, uh, Spruce Street, and Walter. Um, the concrete work was completed on Lilac. Uh, right now, we're kind of on hold until we get a good stretch of weather. We might not have a good stretch until February or March now, but we'll, we'll see. If we get a, a decent week or a decent few days, the contractor is going to come back in and, and finish up his concrete work. You um, mean by good good weather, you mean warmer weather? It's got to be 40 and rising? Correct. To pour concrete? Yeah, well, it does, yeah, yeah, correct. That's be 40. Yeah. It's not because of rain, it's uh, because it, of temperature. That That's correct. That's correct. Um. The uh, 2021 road program uh, on the agenda, we have our proposals for that work. Um, we did meet with um, uh, the township officials and went over what streets we wanted to do. The, the local aid, um, we're kind of locked in on that because that's a grant that we applied for. Um, so we're gonna be doing second street from um, Lilac to the end where the, there's a cul-de-sac at the end on the Northern side. And we're doing River's Edge Drive from Fenimore to Second Street. Uh, that'll be done under the DOT grant. And then for the local funds, um, we decided that uh, Third Street was the best uh, street to, to focus on. Um, it was uh, Richard, John, uh, Fenimore, and, and the mayor. We uh, reviewed, reviewed the streets and, and came up with Third Street to, to do uh, the local aid. And that'll be um, that'll be Third Street from uh, Cedar to Hazel. Um, so if if everything um, goes okay, what we'll, we would uh, get the local aid plans done first, and we would like to do the project similar to last year, where we're going to combine the local aid uh, grant program together with the township money and do one project. Um, but we want to get the the local aid, the state um, funded portion done into them so they can review it, get their approval, and then we can, can move on. 
Um, so we're looking at um, definitely a spring startup for, for construction. Um, the, uh, the, the county park grant um, last year's uh, store is going to be out there uh, either at the end of this week or, or next week to start the stone parking lot um, on uh, Memorial Avenue. That shouldn't take too long. I, I have to lay it out for him and, and he'll get in there and put the, the, the stone in. And that includes the stone parking lot and the uh, 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 curbing. It's a wood curbing that we're putting in, pressure treated curbing. Um, the Cooperstown Road uh, sidewalk master plan, we met uh, with, that, with that as well. And um, we, we, we reviewed our, our, our preliminary plan and there was some good input from from uh, the mayor and, and John and Richard, and we're going to do, do doing some revisions to that plan. Um, along with that, there'll be also some discussion later on about the uh, the frontage along um, uh, the crossings. So um, we'll be talking about that then. Um, the town hall COVID, uh, we that we, we did get a contractor for that. For putting the pester window in the, I guess that's the uh, prosecutor's office um, or defendant's office. Yeah. Um, so that is ready to go. The contract is ready to go. Um, so coordinating with him and with the manufacturer of the pester window, and uh, we'll get our permits and get started on that. That'll probably be starting in the next couple of weeks. Good. And uh, that's all I have at this point. Thank you. Um, Welcome. We'll jump the line here. Mr. Fenimore, are you out there? Mr. Fenimore? Can you hear me? Uh -huh. I see yes. him. There he is. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, we finally finished picking up leaves. We picked up uh, 2,870 cubic yards of leaves. Uh, we put a half a ton of asphalt out. Uh, we plowed one time. Uh, we put out 28 tons of salt for the snowstorm, and we are finally getting rid of the massive pile of wood chips. Uh, the county has been gracious and uh, hauling them out. I think we have about three loads left, and they've probably taken out 35 um, tandem dump truck loads. So that's a lot of um, wood chips. And um, we're turning the leaves. The big process now is to return all the leaves, which I've been working on for about a week now. And I'm down to three rows. Uh, and hopefully I can condense um, uh, 13 rows down to 12. Uh, and every time we flip them, we hope to get rid of one row. Um, you know, as they start to de decompose. And that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, sorry. To... Um, I, I'm gonna make, can I make a comment to John? Um, yes. I'd like to, uh, John, um, I'd like to thank you for getting uh, Paradise contracting in to do the bricks at Gateway Park. Um, it's It looks great. They did a wonderful job. There's no more trip hazard there. Um, but I yeah, it does also, look good. It does, it really does. And I'd like to know if you could get them to provide an estimate for us. Or Richard, I don't know if we have to go out to bid on this, but the walkway needs to be redone. A lot of the bricks are sinking there. And I think it's something that we should put in the budget. So I don't know, Richard, do, did we go out to bid on, on that project? No, we didn't. Uh... It all depends on the dollar amount. That was a small repair job. If John wants to ask them to give an estimate just for budget purposes, and then we can determine based on that preliminary estimate, whether or not, uh, you know, how we proceed from there. Okay. Which bricks do you want done, Kate? They, um, the walkway, um, the actual Going walkway. up to, the one yeah, going up. Going up to the gazebo because okay. And they can take a look at it. And uh, I mean, they work there, so they kind of know, right. but I would ask them to get an estimate 
to improve all that because they're all sinking. Okay, I will okay. do. John, and yep. then we can put that in our budget. Good, thanks, John. What uh, what did that project cost? Uh, it was twenty eight hundred dollars, I think twenty eight something, I think. Okay, is it both walkways you're talking about, Kate, from the corner and and the the second walkway from uh, Rank Cocos? There's only one walkway that has the dedication bricks. Oh. It's the main walkway. There's only one uh, brick walkway. The other walkways are cement. I think concrete. what we need, I think what we need to do, because I, 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 um, when I was clearing the snow out front, I think I hit a brick or something that was sticking up. I'll have to check that out, but we're going to have to check them out and uh, make sure um, they're right. Because there's, you know, um, there's going to be a, probably a bunch of trip hazards in the future. Right, exactly. I know that I know they're going up. That they have. So there's a lot of them that resettled. So, yeah. I don't know. And, what do we want to exactly do? Do the whole thing, or just repair what is bad? I think you need to do the whole thing in order for it to be really effective. I don't know how you can just repair repair it um like they did yeah. around the gazebo uh it would make sense to me to have it done because apparently yep. it wasn't done it wasn't right. done the same way that they did this new job yep. um and um we sold a lot of bricks for there through our project and the, for the women's club to get the money to repay for the gazebo so it's uh and they're honorary bricks so they should look the and they need to be cleaned yeah. as well so i'm not sure if they do that okay okay very good thanks john yep uh, uh thank you let's see uh mr heinold good evening everyone um i just uh for the purposes of public we have uh, a number of things to cover in executive tonight but um, so the public is aware, we did accept title to one Hawk Island, and that has been filed um, with the county clerk's office at the end of last month. I've let uh, our tax assessor know that that is now in township ownership. Uh, so we'll be talking a little bit more about the next steps on that piece of property um, when we get into executive session. And... Um, Harry, are you going to join us for executive session on the on the uh, crossings issue? Uh, sure, sure. I think it, I think that would be helpful because it tie, ties in. I think it's important that you be there for that. Maybe we move that up to number one on on discussion. Yep, absolutely. Yes. Thank you. That's all I have at this Very time, Mary. Good. Uh, Township committee. Let's start off with uh, Mr. Patrick. Uh, okay. Well, today I met met with um, Tom Finan to go over some paperwork for the processes and procedures that they use for the sewer authority. And we went to the um, West Avenue pump station where um, we met with Doug and uh, he showed me everything out there. It was just amazing. Uh, from there, we went out to the plant in Beverly. What an incredible operation, I can tell you that. And Doug is so well-versed. I guess as a child, he must have followed his dad around and it was always his dream to follow in his dad's footsteps. Well, he's doing a terrific job, I can tell you that. Um, so that was uh, my first thing today. Um, I wanted to report on the history You're cut now, Kate. Can't hear. Yeah. Verizon effect. Can someone send her a text message? I'll do it. Okay. Don't let it sink in. 
Kate, are you there? You're cutting out. I think the picture, she lost it completely. Uh, yeah, we lost her. All right. Uh, while we're trying to reestablish contact, Mr. Brown, would you yeah. like to go next? Yes, good evening. Uh, <coughs> I'll report that the uh, County Freeholder Board is now called the County Commissioners. They uh, enacted their new uh, titles. And uh, this year to report the director will be uh, Felicia Hobson and the Deputy Director, Dan o Connell, our neighbor in Del Rayan over there. Um, so hopefully I have a connection with him and um, I, I like that. So other than that, uh, that's all I have. Thank you. Um, Ms. Holland. Hey there. Um, so a week or two ago now, I met with uh, Jeff Paul in the construction office to go over the fence ordinances and hear about some of the uh, recurring problems or code issues that they run into to uh, get in on a Tuesday or Thursday to catch them. Um, library meeting is tomorrow. Um, we are, they are still doing um, browsing by appointment hours, uh, which are listed on their website. They've got two interesting programs for January. Um, the 27th uh, a discussion on social security and on the 28th, um, a discussion about how to create sustainable income during retirement. Um, they've got a lot going on um, and much easier than, than it used to be via Zoom to attend. Um, recreation meeting uh, on Thursday, and I plan to bring this up there, but I also wanted to mention it here. Um, over the weekend, I, in a, in a bout of frustration with the state of the, uh, the park in front of Zerberg um, and all of the dog droppings and, and general litter that's around that area now. Um, you know, I made a Facebook post um, basically asking people to start doing the right thing. Um, and it seemed to generate a lot of interest and similar feelings, similar ire from our residents. And, and it got me thinking that first off, we need to uh, get a, a town cleanup scheduled where you know we're all perhaps taking a, a portion of town and and doing our part to take care of the, the litter that's just accumulating whether it's a whole lot of people doing the wrong thing or you know just catching in the wind but um but I'd like to see us capitalize on the on the pride that people were talking about towards our town um, you know, in, in light of this post. The other thing, um, and I guess probably the Recreation Commission might be the best place, but I, I was thinking about a way that we could encourage our residents to do random acts of kindness. I always see people talking about, um, you know, paying it forward in the Duncan line and um, whatever. I, and I wondered how we could, or if we could, I guess, set up a Delenko acts thing where people would submit their their good deeds or something, and then um, there would be a, a random drawing or you know just something. I, I don't know. I I want to encourage people to get caught doing the right thing, and I don't know how to best do that. Um, but if if everyone might think on it and, and start something. Um, with the, with the rec commission, again, probably the best. I'll, I'll talk about that on, on Thursday. I just, I don't know. I think everyone's just so tired of everything feeling awful and heavy. So something positive like this could be a spark. So anyway, that's that's what I've got going on in life right now. I like it. I like it. Pushing it. And anyone else, uh, anywhere else in the town, other, other, community groups, uh, let's let's talk this up. I, I like the idea. Uh, Kate, are you back? Okay, yeah, I'm back. Um, and I was gonna bring up recreation as well. Um, 
we are doing uh, dye kits for the families this year for Easter um, in the event that we can have the Easter egg hunt and they'll be distributed similar to the way that we distributed the um, gingerbread houses. Um, and as to Christine's point, I have to say that I go around town little by little walking and today in, within three days, just from my house to Gateway Park, back and up to Walters Avenue, I collected another full bag of trash. That's after two days ago I did it. So, um, and, and I, people do see you doing that. I mean, people see me and say, what are you collecting, you know? Uh, but so, I mean, it's important, Christine, it's a good point. And um, I don't know if REC is where to start. Um, I always thought that we could start a, a separate committee to clean up the Lanco, but, but maybe that's a good place to start. Um, I also wanted to say that we have a history board meeting Wednesday, tomorrow is sewer authority, uh, REC is Thursday, and also senior citizens are Thursday. So I have a busy week, but I did, um, for all the sweethearts out there, I did add some hearts at Gateway Park. So it looks a little more festive and I'm gonna keep the lights up until after um, Valentine's Day. So I'll take them down after that. And thank you, um, I'm sorry I cut out again. Hopefully I'll be on for the rest of the meeting, I'm hoping, crossing my fingers. That's all I the have. The curse of Verizon. All right, thank you. Uh, let's see, Burn. Mr. Mayor, Mr. Mr. Mayor. Who's that, John? John. Yes, John, can I interrupt you for one minute while we were all talking about the uh, trash situation? Oh, um, go ahead. Can you yes, hear me? Yes. Uh, last week, I sent one of my guys out um, uh, for a day and a half, and he picked up seven green barrels of trash along the roadways, and it's constantly, uh, there's areas today that I saw that uh, I don't know where it's coming. I think it's coming from uh, a lot of the trash. Uh, I'm going to talk to our trash company. They seem, I told them. Um, a couple years ago, don't flip the cans upside down because a lot of times they don't get all the trash out. And for whatever reason, you know, the can gets turned over and nobody picks up the trash. But I mean, it's constantly, um, uh, we're, we're fortunate because we got a small town and we can get through the town pretty quick. But some of these, if you look all over, it's getting disgusting. It is uh, absolutely uh, everywhere. Um, I, I don't know why, um, I, I would like to see, uh, I'm going to start, uh, purchasing some no littering signs and I don't know what our fine, uh, uh first offense fine, but I, I tell you, I would somehow like to see it increased where it would get somebody's attention. Uh, it seems like a lot of people from McDonald's to go to McDonald's, not only McDonald's everywhere. Dunkin' Donuts, and they just throw the trash right out of the car. And I don't know how we can get anybody's attention, but, um, uh, you know, I'll, I'm willing to listen. And that's all I have. Thank you. Thanks for jumping in there. Uh, yeah, I've gotten some calls while, uh, while we're talking about this right now. I've gotten some calls, uh, messages left, and, and notes and so forth. Uh, uh, a lot of complaints along Cooperstown and uh, Creek Road and so forth. Um, and I don't know if it's the, the increased pedestrian traffic between the light rail and some of the businesses out on uh, Enterprise Drive and uh, people are just unable to uh, hang on to that, uh, that soda bottle or that bag of chips or whatever until they get to the light rail station or until they get to work. Uh, but it ends up uh, 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 taking uh, you know, a day and a half of our public works personnel to pick it all up again. So uh, we can talk about that uh, uh, later in the meeting when we get to that um, on the uh, sidewalk issue. So, uh, Mr. Allette. Uh Yes, I'd like to uh, sort of piggyback on the uh, Gateway Park. Uh, the other day, uh, I guess this is right after Tate had put up the hearts and initially it was like, well, it's a little early for Valentine's Day, but in light of 
what's going on down in DC and in our country. I, I, when I saw the hearts, it's also hit, you know, uh, that there's a lot of good out there and we need to take uh, a look and again, be respectful uh, of each other as people. So, uh, I thought that was a nice touch, Kate. Thank you. And then uh, as uh, we had joint land use board meeting last week. Uh, it was reorg for the uh, for the joint land use board. Uh, Miss Van Gendron is going to be the chairperson again uh, this year. Uh, she does a great job in her leadership and uh, in uh, guiding the joint land use board or at least uh, with the meetings. So and the professionals all stayed the same. And that's all I have. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Um, the, the last week's been, uh, as we all know, has been a little, little uh, has been troubling. And uh, I uh, was trying to put some thoughts down on a piece, piece of paper and it never quite got organized into anything um, that I'm gonna read right now, but uh, it's, things, things, things have to change. Uh, our democracy requires uh, two vibrant uh, political parties that go back to, uh, I guess, Jefferson and Adams. Um, and, uh, you know, fundamentally had, you know, uh, the, the reasons that uh, or the, the common things that the both parties work for are, are numerous and, and strong. And there's, there's been the differences. But in the last couple of years, um, the guardrails seem to have come down and uh, what's acceptable um, uh, has really gone into the gutter. And that's, that's really unfortunate. And uh, I think we saw the, the culmination of that uh, last Wednesday and uh, I'm fearful that we're gonna see more of that. Uh, that people have been uh, really have led, been led down the path. Uh, our institutions have been undermined. Uh, our judicial system, our um, governments at all levels have been uh, uh, ridiculed and and uh, um, just uh, there's there's a tone of distrust for all these institutions. Um, Fortunately, at the at the at, at the at the base level uh, across the country, in polling stations and county and municipal clerks, uh, they seem to the, be the ones that have upheld their oath of office much better than many many members of Congress and other elected officials, governors and the states' attorney generals, and so forth. And that part's been very refreshing. That at the at the core, at the grassroots of our country that people, regardless of what, uh, what political party, who they're registered with, that the rule of law and doing the honest good job and honest work was important and that uh, carried us through. Um, but there's been so much, um, there's been almost like termites chewing through uh, uh, the pillars of our democracy the, over the last four years that uh, there's just become this, this deep-seated distrust of a manufactured lie. And that's, uh, that has to change. Um, and I'll end with, uh, I think the best comment was, uh, was made last Wednesday night by Senator Romney. He said, the best way we can show respect for the voters who are upset is by telling them the truth. That is the burden and that's the duty of leadership. And that's the oath that we take uh, that we took last uh, January 4th and that uh, any public official takes uh, up and down the chain. Um, and uh, we have to, from coast to coast, um, somehow rebuild that because uh, this cannot go on. So that's all I have to say about that. Consent agenda items. Uh, consent agenda items are considered to be routine, be enacted in a single motion. Any item requiring discussion will be removed from the consent agenda. 
All consent agenda items will be reflected in full in the minutes. Does anyone have any questions or comments or, or uh, want a particular ordinance or resolution pulled out for separate consideration? Could you say something, John? Hey, John, um, can I just ask for one point of clarification? I'm back. Did you have a question, John? I, I, I did. I, I have two on this consent agenda. Sure. Okay. Uh, resolution 2021-28, refund tax overpayment due to a total veterans exemption. When I when I looked, it's it's made to Dr. Horton and not a private individual. How can that be? Twenty twenty one dash twenty eight. All right, I'm gonna. Uh, I think uh, the memo from Aaron said that Dr. Horton paid it, but the resident is a is a exempt veteran. If I remember the email from Aaron. Okay. So. Oh. I see Janice nodding. Is that correct? Yeah, the, the email from the tax office in, indicates the refund goes to D.R. Horton that they had paid that, um, but there was a, a veteran exemption okay. that uh, was awarded to that property. So it goes back to who made the payment. Okay. And uh, my second uh, question was, I was I I didn't quite catch Harry. Uh, on the um, the change order number one for Hickory and Chestnut Street drainage improvement, Harry, I didn't quite catch you. We're, we're voting on this in the uh, consent agenda. Um, can can you just explain why that went up so much? Um, sure. Yeah, that that was it. Wasn't part of the original project. Um, the drainage line that goes down all the way from Hickory to Rancocas uh, and Poplar, um, that inlet is where we're going to put the flat, uh, flat valve, the, the check valve um, for that whole system so the water doesn't on come the, up. On the, on the creek bank, right? Uh, no, it's actually going to be in that inlet right on the corner of Poplar and, and Rancocas. Oh, okay, next to, next to Freddie's house. Okay, McQuaid. Yeah, yeah, yeah the I one we can't ever get back in there. Yeah. Yeah. The old boatyard. Okay. Yes, correct. Yeah. Um, All right. And, and and that inlet actually is where we were going to put the the check valve, and uh, I'm going to say maybe three four months ago, uh, the inlet actually collapsed. Right. John, you know, gave me a call and saw that the inlet collapsed, so we rebuilt that inlet now as part under our other project rather than going at the bids just for that. Is, it, is that an check. area that we can get back in and look? Oh yeah, it's right on the corner. It's a, it's a new inlet right on, right on uh, Rancocas. Where Poplar okay. hits Rancocas. Yeah, you, okay. you can't mess with you get right there. Okay, that's all I have. Okay. Thank you, John. Chris? You had some questions? Oh, she froze up. No, that was my same question. I uh, had an asterisk next to DR Horton. So we're on the same page. Good catch. Uh, to go back to the uh, veterans, uh, the refund goes back to DR Horton's. Uh, is in our notes, is there a way uh, to note which resident or which person? That property applies to. It, it was in her memo. Oh. Okay. I think it was nine Austin. Okay. I don't know. If I'm... Oh, it's at twenty. Um, it's nine Austin Drive. It's right in the. It's right in the resolution that is attached to our agenda. It says nine Austin Drive. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Regarding the consent. All right, here we go. Ordinance uh, 202101, ordinance authorizing the construction of various capital improvements in and for the township of Blanco County of Burlington, New Jersey, appropriating the total sum of $440,000, uh, therefore, and appropriating the sum of $200,000 from the capital improvement fund and $240,000 from the state of New Jersey road aid grant. This is first reading by title only and set public hearing date for February 1st, 
2021 at 7 p.m. Resolution 2021-27, uh, resolution authorizing appointment for continuing disclosure service disclosure agent services resolution-28 resolution to refund tax overpayment due to total veteran exemption pursuant to njsa 54 colon 4-3.30 a uh, resolution-29 uh, disposal about a surface office equipment uh, resolution-30 resolution authorizing professional services njdot municipal local a road program grant and 2021 Township Road Program. Resolution-31, uh, adopting 2021 Temporary Capital Budget. Resolution-32, uh, uh, authorizing change order number one for the Hickory and Chestnut Streets Drainage Improvement Project. Resolution-33, uh, refund tax overpayment. Uh, payment of bills, uh, account current fund of $756,049.38. Payroll one hundred forty four thousand two hundred three dollars forty six cents. Capital fund one hundred twenty thousand dollars one hundred twenty thousand one hundred seventy three dollars and forty nine cents. Unemployment fund five hundred fifteen dollars forty six cents. Cops Care Trust fund five hundred forty six dollars and twenty three cents. Municipal open space one thousand five open space excuse me one thousand five hundred seventeen dollars forty cents. Approval of minutes October nineteenth twenty twenty. Approval of the consent agenda. Motion, please. So moved. Motion by Ms. Fitzpatrick. Second. Christine did. Second. Thank you. Uh, roll call, please. Mr. Brown. Yes. Ms. Fitzpatrick. Yes. Ms. Holland. Yes. Yes. Mr. I heard. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Arlett. Yes. And Mr. Templeton. Yes. Thank you. Uh, meetings now open to the public for comments and questions. Session two. If you have a comment or question, please speak up. Your name and address, please. Uh, may I cut in here? It's uh, Peter Fritz calling from uh, 303 Union Avenue. And uh, just want to report quickly uh, on the history board uh, uh, that there was. Um, um, what's been happening with our uh, military veterans honor roll that we launched uh, back on Veterans Day. And uh, there was some uh, concern about it after we put it up. Uh, we took it down briefly. Uh, we had discussions with uh, people in the township committee and uh, there was um, discussion with uh, our council, uh, uh, the council for the uh, township. And uh, we suggested that um, we uh, were fairly safe in putting up uh, material that was on um, deceased veterans. And there was not a, a legal issue on there. Uh, but for living veterans, uh, the preference was that we get um, uh, written acknowledgement uh, after they had a chance to review what we we're putting up there and they would sign off um, before we would put it back up. So I just want to let you know that we went through and we recoded everything so that the, uh, we recoded the um, deceased veterans uh, from the uh, current uh, veterans and uh, military that uh, uh, were on there. And that after a period of time, we put the deceased ones back up. So the, um, uh, the honor roll is back up on the website. Um, the other ones we have, uh, and we've gone over uh, all the records of the ones that were there um, in our worksheet, and uh, Steve is, is going to put up a refresher, which will uh, take care of the, you know, few concerns, I guess, that we had on rereading. We caught some typos and that kind of thing. Um, and we're in the process now of starting to reach out to the living veterans uh Kate Fitzpatrick is helping with the, some of the stuff because of her uh, vast knowledge of the seniors in town and um, we're um, what we're doing is, is sending out a, a draft of what we had, had intended to post they have an opportunity to make a change or uh, give us additional information uh, correct any anything and then um, sign off on it. And once they let us know, then we recode it back. And then the next time we refresh, it comes up. 
So we're really working from two files. The work file is a private file that uh, that we work on, uh, Steve Mc and uh, Steve McLaughlin and me and the committee. And um, then after we we code it, uh, then it converts over to, to the public view that goes uh, online. So that's the process right now. I hope it meets with everybody's approval. And uh, uh, shortly, uh, I, I think it's it's a very impressive list. Uh, when I read the in individual work of our, our veterans over the years, um, it's just astounding to me how much impact they had in, in, over many, many conflicts and many uh, theaters of operations. So um, anyway, that's where we are in that project. And if you have any questions or cons you know, um, continued concerns, uh, let us know. So we have some guidelines to go with. Very good. Thanks for the good work on that. Okay. Any other comments from the public? Uh, I'll make a quick comment. Intro, this is Catherine Tersich Keeley from 740 Rancocas Township uh, Liaison from the Board of Ed. Good evening. Hello. Um, actually, let me take myself off. Of... Nice to see everybody. Um, so I was appointed the liaison to the township committee from the Board of Ed at our reorg meeting, uh, which was last week. Um, so I'll be here at every meeting uh, for the foreseeable future. Um, so we did our reorg uh, on 1-6 and Marissa Karmanugian was elected president. Um, we weren't able to get a majority vote for vice president. So we'll be holding a special meeting on 1-20 at 8 p.m. Um, and the agenda and Zoom link will be available to the public on delanco.com. Um, shortly before that meeting. And then our next regular meeting after that will be February 10th at 7 p.m. and every first Wednesday thereafter. Um, and then the last thing I had, which um, DeSantis already sort of touched on was that Delanco schools are scheduled to return to their hybrid program on 119. Those are my updates. Thank you. Uh, congratulations, Catherine. I did listen in on that meeting and um, Everyone should be congratulated. It was um, quite a reorg meeting, I can say. <laughs> but thank you. Thank you for attending our meeting. It was very exciting, yes. <laughs> nice to meet you. Any other comments from the public, please? All right, I'll close this uh, comment and question section of the meeting is now closed the public. Uh, correspondence, Mrs. Lohr. Yes, Mayor, we have um, I have one piece of correspondence that came in to um, writing uh, about the continued uh, trash on the streets of Delanco, specifically Cooper Creek and uh, Cooper Town Road. Um, and it's a shame to see a special town like Delanco have this problem um, from Candy Burr, Six Myers Place. So again, people are noticing all the trash. I responded to uh, Miss Burr this morning and uh, spoke with her about that. So I appreciate the, uh, the input and, and uh, your interest in the clean community. So very good. And that's all I have for correspondence. All right, uh, let's see, status of coronavirus disease, COVID-19. Boy, well, I'd be glad when this is off the agenda. Uh, community impact, impact update. Uh, there was a county health conference call uh, Actually, last week, there wasn't a whole lot of uh, new items to report there other than what we, you know, see and hear in, in the news and the daily uh, uh, county accounts. Uh, we're over 200 uh, total cumulative positives through Delanco now. Uh, the hospital census is up with 25% of uh, patients in, in county hospitals are uh, there for COVID. And this is much higher than it was last spring. Uh, one of the, the mega sites that uh, the chief mentioned, uh, the mega site that's going to be planned is uh, being set up right now. And that should be up uh, Jan open January 15th is the last I saw and heard. Uh, it's going to be in the old uh, Lord and Taylor uh, store down at the Morristown Mall. Um, as far as uh, operating hours, I think the chief had the latest information on that. And uh, but uh, as of the, uh, the county conference call last week, they were expecting to be able to handle 2,500, 2,500 people a day um, through that site. And it's, I think, one of six or eight across the state. Um, the one fact that, did, uh, that was interesting that came out that they, uh, 
the representative that came on from uh, Virtua Health System said that they uh, have seen some instances of people that have gotten their first COVID vaccine coming down with COVID sometime later. So it's, uh, it, it really speaks to the need that it's, it's the COVID vaccine, it's a two-shot vaccine, and the first one doesn't quite get you there. Uh, uh, but the, uh, the COVID cases that they're seeing with patients that have previously been vaccinated with the, the, the first shot uh, haven't been serious or anything like that, but uh, it was something that they, they have noted. And that's all I've got for that update on the health department. Um, does anybody have any questions regarding that? Uh, Mrs. Lohr, employer options for the Section 125 flexible spending accounts? Yes, the um, Consolidated Appropriations Act of 2021 um, that was passed has a provision for various um, options for employees um, regarding their flexible spending accounts. In your packet is what um, the company that um, administers our flexible spending account um, sent us. There's a form that we have to uh, fill out if we're going to allow any of the options. They are optional. And then just today, our uh, Connor Strong, our, our, our GIF, sent over a very lengthy um, explanation of these options under the flexible spending accounts. Uh, we're dealing more with the health uh, spending accounts. We don't have anyone enrolled in the um, dependent care. So that that option, raising that age higher is, is not applicable to Delanco. So what I need Township Committee to do is basically say, um, do you want to give employees that are enrolled in a flexible spending account the option to um, roll over any unused portions into the next year? and even into 2022 and I believe, let me get to that page, 2020, from 2022 into 2023. Um, there is a grace period option. I don't really see where it's that much different than a rollover. Um, usually if you have anything left at December 31st in your flexible spending account, you have a, a, a you can, um, bank up to $500, but you have to use it in the next two and a half months of the new year. This option allows people to have the full next year to use that up. And as people are delaying um, procedures, um, you know, uh, maybe even not has, having their children have braces, they don't want that level of dental or, or orthodontic work at this time during COVID. Um, you know, they may have a lot more money left in their flexible spending account than than what they had originally planned. Um, the other thing, the other option, which we had last year was also people can um, at any time reduce, um, they can join, they can reduce, they can increase their uh, elected um, uh, amount that they want um, each, each paycheck. So, um, but what you can't do is give both a grace period and a rollover. I would recommend the rollover. Who was that? I would, somebody. I would recommend the rollover. Can you hear me now still? Yes. Yes. Quite a bit of interference. And um, and also that people can adjust their F, those flexible spending account if they wish. We had that last year and we did have employees take advantage of that and, and adjusted their FSA amount downward because they were not going to spend as much um, uh, uh, that they had anticipated. So um, is this something that yeah. we're going to see on the agenda for the next meeting or something that we do a voice approval of or decision right now or I'm looking to see I thought I saw a deadline of the end of this month so it's something that we would need to you know uh, have township committee actually take care of this evening Erin, do we know who that is? I don't know. It just says it's a Samsung user. I keep muting them though. Yeah. If, if it happens again, I might put them in the waiting room, but we'll see. Is there any feedback from how many uh, of our staff and employees 
uh, have a preference one way or the other. I don't want to make necessarily make a decision that's going to impact someone's. Well, I, I did not poll. I think there was interest last year in being able to adjust, which was nice. We did have employees take advantage of that. I would recommend that. Um, last year, one of the things that the GIF, I did breeze through the um, what the GIF had sent over today, Connor Strong, there may, they're cautioning there may be some associated increased costs for these additional changes in plans. But last year we were not charged anything additional for the people who adjusted their um, FSA um, deductions. But um, I don't, it's really not that expensive to begin with. I can't imagine that it would really cost that much to uh, allow these changes. Um, and I think allowing people to roll over um, their, their amount is, um, is a good idea yeah. in that, um, you know, a lot of people may not do with, with COVID numbers still being very, very high, may not uh, have certain medical procedures that are not um, critical. Agreed. The other option is that um, any, the other option that you have to make a decision about, I forgot to mention this, is, is to allow those uh, employees that may um, terminate employment in 2021 or 22 to be able to spend down on any deductions that they have. Mm -hmm. uh, normally, if you terminate and you haven't spent your FSA deductions to date, you lose them. Right. right. So they that would be at risk. But um, there's also an option to allow anyone that would terminate in 2021, 20, 22 to be able to spend down on any um any unspent FSA amounts at the date of their uh, um, termination right. or retirement or whatever it would be. So, um, you know, I, the other, the other thing, if you want to take more time um, at the January 25th meeting, even though it's a budget workshop, yeah. it's advertised that the township committee can act on any and all business that it needs to. So if you want to take some more time to think about this, we can certainly just revisit it on the 25th, um, you know, ha uh, have any decisions. I can send out an email to see who might be interested. Um, I think it's, a, I think we're going to have interest in right. being able to okay. roll let's, over. Let's, I don't, I don't think do we that. really need to pull that. If, if everyone's in agreement, uh, have this, we'll do it at the workshop on the 25th. That way we can, let's look at it. Let's see what Janice gets back from uh, polling uh, the staff and, uh, it's kind of hard to make a, I don't even know how many, how many choices we're dealing with here, but uh, I don't want to put our, our staff and employees in, in a financial bind on something that we really don't have enough yeah. information. Well, it's, in front of. it's three things. It's allowing a rollover. Yeah. Okay. Rather than the $500 limit, two and a half months in the new year to let, to, to expend that it's a full year rollover. It's uh, allowing people to adjust or join during, during the year. And also uh, people who terminate that they can draw down on what they've already had that's uh, deducted from their paycheck, but yet not yet expended rather than forfeiting that. So there's, there's three choices. Just, just so you know, if there's any negative impact, it would be on the municipality's budget. But as Janice points out, we pay, we have very few people involved. We pay the minimum monthly payment so there, there isn't any actually any extra cost to the municipality. All it is is a benefit to the people right. doing it. I don't think there's right. any, any risk to harming yeah. an employee. In fact, it's only giving them more options. And other than Janice having to do a little bit more paperwork, which uh, she's a glutton for punishment, she'd be willing to do. I don't see any reason not to just, it's a routine thing, go ahead and do it. I wouldn't waste my time thinking about I, it. I, I, I don't know why we wouldn't do a motion tonight to approve it. I mean, to me, it is just like Richard said, that it's routine, it's to benefit our staff and it, it, it doesn't take a lot of thought. Well, then I was so totally confused all three choices. That because, because I was understanding it was allow the rollover or allow them to uh, draw down or allow them, it seemed like three completely different things. No, right. it's, it's all. It's all three. It's all three. Right. Well, but then, you, 
I would make a motion to approve it. If that's what the, yeah, if that's the, cho the choice that, that gives you all three, I thought we were choosing from one of those three and it just didn't make sense to no, me. You can't give a rollover and a grace period. You have to choose a rollover or grace. The rollover is the better way to go. All right. That's right. the only one where there's a choice. Right. right. And it's then pretty obvious. the other one is anybody can adjust at any time or join. And then the third one is uh, people who leave employment, they don't lose what they have already had um, deducted from their paycheck, but not expended. They can draw down on it. Okay, for the, it that's um, that's three benefits of the of that option. Oh yeah, they're done. Okay, I thought they're, you, were, yeah. you were telling me three different choices. No, 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 you can do all three. All right, all right. Kate, go ahead. I made the motion that we approve uh, those three additional benefits on those accounts. I'll second. Okay. Do you need a roll call or just an A? Let's do a roll call. Oh, you think an A? Okay, all in favor. Aye. Unless somebody Aye. wants to check. Aye. So Go for it, do it. Five eyes. Okay, thank you so much. I'll get that process. Uh, executive orders update, COVID policy procedures. I think we got the thing sorted out with the temperature sign in, health and wellness and all that. So how's that working? Well, we had an amendment number five. Five, and that um, has to be reported on at a township committee meeting. So we had amendment number five, changing our um, uh, daily uh, pre-report to work um, procedure. Instead of coming in and uh, signing off on a, uh, or initializing a sheet that has everybody's names on it per department, um, to be more in line with HIPAA, everyone has been issued an individual logbook. So you come in, you, you know, or you take your temperature, you answer the questions when you get to work, you initial saying on, on that day in your individual logbook that um, your temperature is below the CDC temperature. Um, and also uh, you have answered, you have, you don't have any of this, uh, situations on the uh, on the questionnaire uh, and you initial your own logbook. So everyone has a logbook that uh, everyone was issued a new amendment, amendment number five. Um, and so that is reported for the record. Very, very good. Um, thanks for everyone's input on that. The chief, uh, Mr. Heinhold, uh, we're figuring out how that was supposed to work. And, and Mayor, if I may, I want to give a shout out to Bev who um, put all the log books together for every single employee um, and uh, was basically took this, ran with it and delivered. So thank you, Bev. She does too much. All right, uh, status of township committee meetings, uh, Jan January 28th budget workshop and the first February 1st. I guess we're gonna be on Zoom until further notice, right? Mm -hmm. All right. Recommend it. But we don't have a meeting on the 28th, do we? I'm no. sorry, I put the wrong date. Good catch, Kate. It's supposed to be the 20th, whatever, that might Oh, Chris, that's yeah. why you thought that. That's why that was on the I'm account. sorry. Oh, that's where it came from. Yeah, the 28th is our Field of Dreams meeting. The 25th, 25th is budget. 20, 25th. Yeah. So everyone, that is a budget workshop on the 25th, right. not the 28th. All right. Okay. Great, thank you. Thanks for catching we up. We put those in the agenda to see how, you know. Correct, thank you, Mike. Little, uh... All right, discussion. I think we got through everything there, right? Yeah. All right, moving on. Discussion items through 200 Ash Street, Canvas Shop Building, discussion of public input process guidelines. Um, it's basically to figure out what kind of process we want that the committee wants to have enough information to make a uh, well-balanced, well-based decision process that, uh, that we get enough input from the public. Uh, now, whether that's uh, a public forum where the public, various community groups come in and say, this would be nice or that would be nice or, uh, or we designate a, uh, an ad hoc committee to uh, go and do some research for some intermediate time period. 
and then come back and report on their findings. Um, um, but anyway, this is what are what are what are the committee's thoughts on on how to proceed on this? Mr. Schwab had uh, sent out an email a week or so ago, uh, or a couple of days ago actually, um, that we had some back and forth on on what he thought would be basic information for the public to start with um, to initiate something. But uh, what's the committee think? I, I know in, in Richard's email, he had indicated the first meeting in February. I would like to move that to March if there's no objection, because I'm looking into um, a, a a resident, a former resident, actually, who was very involved in history and um, feels that, you know, we shouldn't just go and tear down a 109-year-old building without doing some research on what some other uh, counties have done. Camden County apparently um, did a renovation of a boathouse right on, uh, right on the riverfront. So I'm looking into what they did, how they did it, where they got the financing. Actually, this was not a boathouse. So, uh, but there are some boathouses on the property adjacent to um, 200 Ash Street, where I believe Mary Ward lives. And I'm gonna, I, I wanna touch base with her to see them. Um, and uh, I wanna talk with some other representatives of different areas just to make sure that we have looked into everything possible before we demolish it because I mean there's no doubt that it is a you know it's a money pit but at least I feel like we're doing our best to make sure that we're doing the best thing for Delanco by demolishing it so I I'd like some more time to do some of my research no, I'm not ready. I'm not going to be ready by February 1. Any other comments, Chris, John? I have no objection to moving to moving that to March. Do you, do you have any thoughts on uh, what kind of uh, mechanism, to, uh, you know, whether it's uh, no, anything that we discuss it with the public and, and advertise it as such and distribute some information or designate a committee or something in between or not? Uh, um, I have mixed feelings. I, I struggle with having the a public forum where everyone gets grandiose ideas about what can be done there without mm -hmm. um, a, a a balance of what we can actually reasonably afford um, versus something like a fact-finding mission by specific members of the committee, which we've been entrusted by our residents to do. Um, that way we can then in March have forum, which is less of a, less of an, uh, an input session as opposed to residents, we did our due diligence and this is where we've landed. Here are the costs. Um, it's just not viable or, hey, we found this great funding source and it's worth salvaging. But, but I think having a, a, a blank slate before the public just leads to a, a long path that we can't really afford. Yeah, John? No, I think you know where I stand. I, I don't want to talk circles around this this building. Right. I agree with Christine. Plus, people have the option of writing letters, which I had given the one fellow from the history board, uh, Bill Baxter, when he called me. I said, uh, write a letter to the township committee and to Art and uh, to Janice. And uh, if you want to call in at the meeting and explain the contents of your letter, I gave him the date and time of our meeting. Uh, his letter was distributed to all members of the township committee. However, he didn't call in. Uh, but I think that is an option for anyone in this town to write a letter and to make a suggestion, or if they have something to back up their suggestion, um, they have that opportunity. Right. So I don't think a public forum, I agree with Chris, 
uh, I don't think a public forum is the way to go. Um, I think we need to do our own due diligence and report and make a final decision. All right, so we'll, uh, Fern, do you have uh, thoughts, ideas? Well, I, my initial thoughts or my, my feelings are uh, the direction of, you know, to remove the building. Uh, but to put the word out there that, you know, this is the direction or uh, we're still researching the piece. Uh, and if anyone wants to give input, again, either write letters or uh, give us a call and give us their, their thoughts on it. Okay. Um, and Kate is going to, I guess, research uh, the boathouse piece. Uh, and again, to me, it's going to come down to, to cost. Right. Uh, you know, uh, if we end up putting up another building, I think, or at least in my opinion, is that uh, to tear that building down and if we end up with a, a new structure there, that that would be uh, more cost effective than trying to salvage the building that's there. Yeah. Okay. All right, well, let's, uh, let's think about uh, having something, getting something together that the committee that we can talk about and present on, uh, you know, as, as Kate suggested at the March 1st meeting. Um, and, and we'll go to our respective corners and, uh, and uh, do some research and see what we can come up with uh, uh, from the five of us. And uh, I know Mr. Schwab's work on some some data that he's he's got uh, just on on the cost and expense of maintaining existing buildings that the township has so uh, do, do you want any of this information on the website do you want to send anything out to all the boards of commissions I, or I, just I think, bring the stuff to you guys and let you guys go from there is there any problem with putting um well, the redevelopment uh, report from Taylor for that whole tract is is obviously a public document. The engineering reports, the structural reports. Uh, uh, I mean, have to do it in context. You have to create yeah. a spot that explains why this is here. And right. Look at it in case you want to have a comment. That was on the basis that you would have a public input form on a particular date. Right. And then you notify people. Here's where you look for the information. Yeah. But if you're not going to be inviting the public to do that as a group on a particular date, then this on the website by itself is kind of a lot of context. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure. I thought you were headed in one direction, but you're probably headed in another direction. Welcome to cat herding. <laughs> no, no, it's, it's, it's we're talking about, we're thinking about it. I mean, and it's, it's uh, as, as all of us, have ever you know realized once once the wrecking ball hits a building it's kind of done and and, and we want to make sure we, we've done the right thing um so uh, um i think it's been on as a discussion item for a number of meetings our agenda is posted um i think the public should know that they could write in or call in during our discussion but i don't think you need to post a special meeting or a special item or to post the information we all report accordingly to what we find out and um i just think that um like fern said i mean I mean, I believe it's a money pit myself, but because someone asked me to research it, I'm doing my job. Okay. Um, that's what I feel I have to do. And, um, and I will report to the committee, to the public at that meeting, what the end result is. But I don't think we need to publish anything to say, we're gonna have this. I, I think people know, the people that are involved in town know all the different boards, at every board I belong to, I list what we're talking about. So this is brought up all the time that we're still discussing 200 Ash Street. I report that at the history board meeting. I report it at recreation. I report it to the seniors. So I would like to think that each 
other member of our township committee, the respective boards, they're reporting that too. So I feel like the word's out there that we're discussing it. No, no uh, decision has been totally made. I would love to add two more comments. Um, you know, as a committeeman, tonight we approved, or I'm not sure if we approved it, but the bids came in for Field of Dreams. Um, $48,000 to uh, keep that grass out there every year recurring, okay? And I, I was one of the ones who worked on that land deal, you know, and had the vision, you know, to make that a park. But uh, it just it sort of gets up my crawl that the recurring expense and everything you do in government is, is expensive. Nobody would pay $48,000 a year to get your lawn cut or fertilized. Um, and uh, if you really wanna do some due diligence, talk to any uh, Palmyra resident, um, ask them, or, or Palmyra officials, ask them how their community center's working out. <clears throat> it sits there empty. Um, right. Nobody's using it. Uh, they have a gym in there. They, they had some senior days, but uh, it's, it's just not conducive to it. Uh, you know, a local taxing entity, it really has to be a regional thing. And, you know, like the county library, it's a beautiful facility out there with concerts and it draws from a larger group, a larger tax base. We would, it just scares me, that, you know, the day that I went in there to turn that into a public building with an elevator system. Yeah. And having to go eight feet or so high up off the uh, ground because of the floodplain, mm -hmm. uh, you're talking, you know, fees after fees after fees and architect and this and it. We don't have it. And then if we did have it, if we bonded for it or we got, there's no special present grants out there. We, we look down the historical preservation avenue many times, you know, even back when Zerberg Mansion was available the first time. I, I just think the uh, wisest move is to demolish it and then see what happens to the other two pieces of land next to it and the county park system as the trail comes through. Um, you know, it's, a, it's all about the future. And uh, I don't think there's a rush to where we have to tear it down, but no, um, no. I'm, I'm convinced that's the way it has to go. No. No, that's uh, some wise, wise comments there, John, and especially with the, the look back on, on being involved early on with the uh, Pennington uh, uh, tri-party deal. All right, um, so we'll do our, do our due diligence and we'll see what the, if we're ready to talk about something or make a, make a decision early in, in March then. Uh, let's see. Anything else? That's it for discussion. Um, resolution for executive session. I moved. Yep, that'll be resolution 2021-34, authorizing executive session. Um, that was moved you by executive session for 2021-34, uh, I believe Ms. Holland had made a motion for that. Mm -hmm. Second. Second by Mr. Brown. And uh, we've got a couple items to go through there, and we'll probably be at least an hour or so. Yeah, is um, uh, everyone in favor of Aye. that resolution? Thank, Aye. You. Thank you. And also for the public, um, we're going to go into executive session. The township committee um, may or may not have additional business after executive session. So, um, but they will come out of executive session to at least adjourn the meeting. All right, we'll have a few no members of the public. I think we're done, motion to adjourn. So moved. Move. Second. A motion by Mr. Olette, second by Chris Holland. All and just for the, for the record, there was no um, item of business returning out of executive session only to adjourn. All right. Good. Thank you, everybody. All, All in right. favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.
Good night. All right. Have a good night. Um, All right. Good night. Bye, Betty. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.